All right, welcome back to Tucson RV Solar. What we got this week is a Rockwood Mini Light. Uh, we're gonna do the full Victron treatment to it uh, with 800 watts of rich solar panels. You can see we already got those up there. I uh, haven't sealed them yet, but we'll take care of that here in a little bit. This is a 30 amp rig. You can see the plug there in the back. Um, but got a slightly different design in here. So let's just go talk about what we're gonna do. <clears throat> First thing we're looking for here, since that short power cord's all the way in the back, is where's the power distribution box? So that's where we're actually gonna splice into the power in that will run underneath the floor. And we're going to put all of our equipment under this couch. So, got a couch here, Murphy bed that folds down over it. So, not a whole lot of space, but definitely plenty in there to be able to put our entire Victron system, as well as two 300 amp hour Epic Essentials batteries. Uh, so, he's definitely going to have everything he needs to do to be 100% off grid and do lots of camping this summer. Uh, we're gonna center line this as much as possible so we can keep kind of all the weight in the middle. Um, so inverter on one side, batteries on the other kind of thing. Uh, and then the rest of it kind of on the board. So one thing we gotta be cognizant of is our clearance underneath there. Uh, so that's gonna drive us to our positioning of the inverter. And then from there, the batteries and everything else is gonna go uh, in board. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and make the board so that hopefully we can just drop it in at a later point, but definitely going to take out these bolts on both sides so we can remove that seat, have lots of room to play with for all of our final wiring, and then making a hole underneath so that we can hide all that wiring and make it look good. Uh, for his Touch 70, uh, we went through the same drill as we normally do. Came up with primary location up there above the thermostat. Super easy to get to. Uh, he can put this slide out like half an inch and still be able to get through, so no worries. And then we got a backup location right in here. It's dead behind there where the sink is, so there is room if we have to. Um, but should be able to get it up in the primary location. Pretty simple. Uh, so with that, we are going to finish up on the roof. Go ahead and seal that up so that it can start setting up. And then we'll get busy in here opening this up. And about everything under here so we can find a good chase to be able to go ahead and drop the touchscreen wiring and then push all of our wiring across all right so more to follow well here we are up on the roof and as you can see 800 watts fits nicely right up here already sealed it with the die core got them all wired up we got series series and then put both of those in parallel and those are not actually connected going into the roof yet we'll do that at the very end when we start all of our testing uh, one thing we do do is put a little die core on the wire. Don't want it moving around at all. No extra holes, just securing it. So 800 watts, step one done. Gonna move on to the next part. Okay, welcome to the mess. So what we are is putting together the board now that's gonna go inside the trailer. Um, <clears throat> so since it's gonna be kind of more of a freestanding thing, it's going underneath that couch slash Murphy bed uh, what I've done is create a board that's going to be on its back inverter is going to be laying right here going uh, venting that way plenty of ventilation so no issues there got the servo GX and our 150 70 MPPT mounted vertically uh, servo doesn't have to be mounted vertically uh, but it'd be easier for him to access it under the couch and then the uh, controller does need to be mounted vertically uh, this is right towards the edge. We've got lots of opening above uh, where this will be prior to going to the couch. So awesome ventilation uh, for the passive ventilation on the back of these fans. And then we've already prepped for where it's going to go inside the trailer. So this is where all the wires are going to come up. So our 30 amp cables uh, into and out of the inverter. And then 
uh, our ground and our HDMI and USB for the servo where we've already attached those to the flat screen. Uh, and then as you can see, one change we've done on this one, we're using this die hole uh, 400 amp breaker. Uh, it has an actual higher interrupt rating than a class T fuse. So, and man, you talk about solid, you know when this thing's on or off. Uh, did have to shave down the sides of our this lug, which will go on the 4 out cable. Uh, made a copper bar to attach down there. So we've got plenty of opacity guaranteed and plenty of surface area all the way up to the front of where that attaches. So it shouldn't be an issue here. And then on the solar side of the house, we're closing off this dude. Uh, our solar wires that are pre-ran are going to come up through here, going to the breaker. So we'll be able to turn uh, or both protect the cabling and turn the solar on and off from the roof. And then obviously our smart shunt. Uh, what you don't see are the batteries, right? So we cut, we measured this perfectly so that the batteries would actually fit right here. Um, so these are going to be going right into our battery bank, which will be wired in parallel for two of those epic 300 amp hour batteries. So it should be a nice fit. It'll look pretty good once it's all in there. And then we have a new addition to the solar trailer. Renly loves being out here with me. And looking outside, so I think I'm going to need to put in some type of door uh, so that she can hang out here and <laughs> help us do installs. And that right, Renly? Yep, you're the new boss, supervisor. Got to make sure we're good to go. Okay, we'll take care of it. All right, so we just looked at the board. Now we're back in the trailer. Uh, a couple of things we've already done in here. We mounted our flat screen display. Perfect mount right there. Awesome part of this was once I took off this vent underneath the stove, uh, there was actually an opening there. And that opening through the bottom of the trailer, it was already there. So able to run HDMI and USB cables uh, after I attached them to the flat screen connection. And we got our breaker box for our power in, power out. Uh, we're able to tap into that. So already ran all those. They're underneath the trailer. I'll show you those in a second. They are going to come up in here. As you can see, we just removed the cushion, placed it to the side. So that whole board is just going to slide right in there. Um, remember, we pre-drilled that big circle where everything's going to come up from underneath. And basically, we're going to pre-measure. And I know that that hole is going to be somewhere right in there, uh, which is wide open underneath. Uh, so obviously we'll be able to run our wires up and then put some conduit on them, make them nice and secure. And then underneath you can see where the wires are coming out. Uh, we opened up the belly, got everything ran and ready to go. So once I pre-drilled that hole, which would be to the right side of the water tank or the gray tank that you see up there, uh, that's where we'll be able to punch through and then start uh, sealing everything back up. It'll look nice and stock just as it was. And then our last bit prior to all that will be running our 12 volt cable, which will attach right under there. Because uh, we'll be deleting these lead acid batteries. Uh, once those go away, basically making a jumper four gauge cable, which is overkill way for this. Six gauge is probably be funny. Uh, from there to go into our Lynx distributor through that same access hole, uh, preserving all the 12 volt power. So no issues there. Uh, and with that, we'll get back at it. Okay, you kind of see how things are laying out now. Not complete, but where we are right now is in the testing phase. And I just want to talk about this a little bit because it just guarantees that we can catch problems as they arrive and hopefully finish them up on time. So lots of things going blue. So our standard procedure is just to make sure one last double check before we even turn on that switch. That's the first switch, whether it's the die hole breaker or the big red blue C battery disconnect switch. Double check all of our connections one last time. Positive to positive, negative to negative. If it's good, then we throw the switch. First thing we're looking for is that green light. Now, you may say that, hey, that doesn't come with that unless you buy the... Uh, links shunt, but we did the hack 
So we're able to get the lights to go because we think that is an awesome thing for the customers to have that capability to see at a glance that all their fuses are good. And if not, which one is blown? Uh, because we do provide spare fuses for our customers as well, just in case they need it and they're out in the middle of nowhere and Amazon does not deliver uh, to where they are. <clears throat> so we've tested those two things and now we can go ahead and start our initial program. So we've got our uh, smart shunt and our smart solar. Already programmed those. Um, awesome test on the solar is uh, check in one last time. Do we have the proper voltage and the proper positive, not negative, on the right side? So good continuity or polarity all the way through. And then all the batteries typically are shipped somewhere around 50%. Like these today were at 54. Uh, so we're right at 1 o'clock in Tucson in February. So I knew I'd get pretty good wattage as soon as I fired this thing up. And sure enough, we get right at, right at 500 watts. So a good test of our panels our wiring going through all of our fuses into charging the actual batteries themselves. And then just one last sanity check. Do we actually have 12 volt lights? And we do. So we know the 12 volt uh, relay is working in for the entire camper. And now we'll switch over to the 120 side. We turned on the inverter, so we know we got good uh, uh, power through the capacitors in to fire the inverter up. Uh, the microwave already came on. You can't see it because they put that little piece of tape over it. Uh, but we know that the inverter works. So now I'm going to go get the laptop and start programming that. Uh, we'll do our final test, both offshore power, onshore power, uh, the different phases of charging for the inverter, so that we can demonstrate all of that to the customer tomorrow when they come pick it up. Uh, and then we'll go through, clean everything up. We'll give one last look before we close it. More to follow. Okay, finished it up with this Rockwood Mini Light. Got 800 watts up on the roof. We have deleted the original 12 volt connection up here. So now he's got a storage box. Everything that we did underneath is all closed up and super clean. And actually, let's look over here. So remember we made the box, pseudo box. And on this side, you can barely even tell and it stops uh, or provides them a little bit extra or a little bit of storage still but it doesn't interfere with any of the operation and as far as access from this side if it got super hot for whatever reason all you got to do is open this door and way a lot of venting uh, but plenty of ventilation anyway because of the way the couch sits up on top but you can see how low profile everything is couch is reinstalled wall above there got the batteries secured and you can see how it sits in there nicely everything covered working like a champ and then when you want to put this away there's the couch operation don't even know it's there and then over on the touch screen Five o'clock in the afternoon, still getting 100 watts. We were at almost 500 watts right when we kicked it on. Um, but everything working like a champ. Customer excited, ready to hit the road.